Hi, I'm Paul Germain, and welcome to another session of Smart Boating. As you know, if you watched the show before, we cover a variety of topics, from man overboard to navigation. And the general idea is to provide you with some information, help you make smarter decisions, and have more fun on the water. And that's just what this show is about today. We're going to look at the marine coatings and sealants and adhesives. And joining us is an expert in that area. His name is Tucker Carter, and he's a uh, marine coatings consultant from Pettit Paint Company. Welcome. Hi, Tucker. Paul. Thanks for having me. Great to have you. Hey, uh, we've got a really cool show here today, and a lot of the stuff we're going to be talking about is really applicable to many, many boaters. Um, but before we get into it, can you share a little bit about your background in boating and in coatings and sealants? Of course. Uh, so personally myself, I grew up in Portland, Maine, working on the waterfront. Uh, I went to UMass Lowell, got my degree in plastics engineering, mm -hmm. um, and now I work for Pettit Paint as a marine coatings consultant dealing with the resins and adhesives that we are going to talk about today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you got a lot of background in it, and you got a little background in boating too? Yes, I'm definitely a yeah. passionate boater myself. <laughs> I got the hitch. Good, good, good. Well, that's a good combination, and I think that's going to prove to be just the right combination for the show today. Yes, yeah. I hope so. All right, well, let's get right into it then. Sounds good. Okay. Well, Tucker, you know, this topic of coatings and sealants and these is a big one. Big as the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> Can't cover it all, but we can cover some of the highlights. Yeah. And uh, uh, things that I think will be bolder to watching will find important to it. And, and I thought we'd start today with uh, like coatings mm -hmm. and there's some different types of coatings that have come out recently and and you have one now that you can use to uh, renew fabrics yep. upholstery like this right yes yep. we do we actually came out with a new product specifically for marine upholstery marine fabrics um, in dinghy uh, inflatable dinghies yes, materials yep. specifically mm -hmm. PVC okay um, it's called easy fabric coat it comes in quite a few different colors. We've got it in dark gray, light gray to match the dinghies, oh, yeah. um, as well as khaki, white, and black. Okay. So we've got a, a little offering there to kind of hit everything you need for accents and anything you might want to do just to refinish some existing cushions that are a little faded. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. It's not going to fill any cracks, but it'll oh. certainly uh, give some life back into some old cushions like the one we've got here. Mm -hmm. um, that, you know, is dated color-wise, it's a little sun faded, but if you, you touch it up with this, it'll get you through a couple seasons. Yeah. And it's certainly a cost-effective option as opposed to reupholstering your boat. Yeah, good point, good point. Okay. So, so what's the process of uh, taking a cushion like this and bringing it back to looking new? So it's relatively simple. Um, our products are, there's no primer needed. Okay. All you got to do is prep the surface, right. degrease it. Well, what right. we've got here today is yeah, our uh, 120 brushing thinner. Okay. Um, yeah, you can use that on here. Yeah, we'll, we'll put some on a rag and just okay. wipe it off. Okay. Um, this is just to remove any contaminants on the surface. If you're using this, um, just let it evaporate once you've wiped it off, and then you can go ahead and go right in with the, the vinyl fabric spray. Uh, a okay. little tech tip there, if you use MEK um, or acetone, something like that, to soften the surface, it'll mm. make the, the fabric a little bit more receptive to the vinyl paint itself. Mm -hmm. um, just a little kind of... Be careful with that stuff. Yes, right? be very be careful. Pretty aggressive. Make sure you wear all of your PPE. Um, yeah. But it would certainly help in your final uh, product finish there. Okay, so uh, you've you've prepped this area over here. Yep, already, so we prepped this one just already. Just like you showed us there. We're going to trial out this the satin dark gray. Okay. And we'll show you how quickly it covers over this blue. Mm -hmm. We'll do a little bit here. I'll try not to spray Paul. Yeah, good, good. <laughs> After you've shaken this for a few minutes, then you're just going to hit it with a couple light coats. You'd be very surprised how quickly this is going to dry. Oh. Um, it covers the blue, as you can see, very easily. Yes just in these first few light coats. And you wanna make sure you get all the nooks and crannies because the product actually will remain flexible. So rather than okay. covering this, if you wanna call it a fingerprint, that like vinyl texture, you can see in the fabric itself, it'll it'll show through as long as you don't lay too yes, much of the product I see, down. I so, see, I see. So multiple light coats, is that the idea? Yes. Yeah. So two to three light coats, you can do them in under 30 minutes. This one you can see, oh, we okay. just did the first one in maybe 10 seconds there. Yeah, yeah. You can certainly come back and hot coat it in another couple minutes. Okay. If you wanted to take your time, you've got a quite a little bit of a recoat time there. Yeah. Um, what temperature are you know which brain this is? A 55 to 75 type thing? That's the ideal window right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, low humidity hopefully. Yes. And uh, two to three coats. Yep, two to three coats, that's all you need. That should last you a few seasons. And then for touch up, maintenance down the road, you just clean the surface again and, and reapply. Wow. So 
That's a super product. I can see a lot of people liking that. Oh, uh, it's an awesome product. Yeah. Uh, it's one of my favorites, personally. Yeah. So I think yeah. it's a good demo of it. It is. Well, Tucker, you know there's a wide variety of paints, as you well know. <laughs> and uh, uh, they're for different applications, obviously. And I have a little dinghy that I use to get out to the boat. Uh, it's a fiberglass dinghy. And I, I uh, coat it once a year to just spruce it up a little bit. And these new uh, epoxy paints, single part epoxy paints, are really, that's a good application for that type of paint, right? Yeah, uh, easy epoxy, just like you said, is a single part paint, it's a polyurethane. It's very forgiving, remains pliable and flexible, Yeah. Uh, especially for dinghies. Yes, uh, it's very tough too. Yeah. It seems to take uh, crashing around at the dock pretty well. Oh, I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so you could start with a bear. My dinghy wasn't bare like this, but, but a brand new one would start like that, right? Yep, so uh, you can paint directly over a fiberglass hull like yours, mm -hmm. uh, gel coat, yes. bare wood. Bare wood yeah. um, in this case, we've gotten a piece of bare wood Yep. We've primed it. We use yep. our uh, 6149 Easy Prime. Mm -hmm. So the full system would be Easy Prime and then followed by two layers of Easy Poxy. Okay, so this has been primed right here. We've already pre-primed this one. Mm -hmm. um, from there, you could, uh, you you would want to use it to fill any, it's a high building primer, so you use it to fill any divots or gaps. In this case, it's filling wood grain to give you a smoother finish. I see, right, right, right. So then you'd go back and sand it prior to applying your first coat. Okay. Um, the other benefit is it gets you to that uh, opacity of the final color you're looking for much quicker. So if yeah. you're going over a dark color and trying to switch to white, it would certainly help you get there quicker. So let me recap. You sand the surface first, and then you put the primer on. Yep. How long do you? How long does the primer take to dry? I usually wait overnight. Give it at overnight. least four or six hours to cure off. Then you sand it again. I would sand it. Yep. Okay. And then we're to the uh, stage where you're talking about putting on the finish coat ex now. Exactly. And here mm -hmm. we've got uh, our. Just Easy Poxy Platinum 3711. Um, we'll demo with the, you can either use a chip brush or a foam brush, whatever your preference is. Okay. Another common form is to roll and tip it. Yes. I'm no professional as far as the application process. But that gives process. a nice finish, doesn't it, though, when you put it on with a roller. That's what I do. It sure does. Yeah. Um, and thinner coats is better. The 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 more more thinner coats is kind of the yes. idea here. Yes. Um, yes, yes that's yes. why we've got a, a foam roller as opposed to you know. A, Very a, short nap on that. Yes. Yep. Shorter yep. the better. Yep. Um, that allows the paint to settle and reduce any brush strokes you'll see in the final finish. Oh, okay. All right. All right. So we'll just apply here using yeah. chip brush. So you can see the different brush strokes. Mm -hmm. um, we'll throw this on, and you can see it actually holds pretty well on these vertical surfaces. So oh, okay. if you're painting the outside of a hull, yes, um, you don't have too much concern about laying some on and having it drip. So yeah, yeah, that's a big thing for me. I'm also concerned with it running. Yes. Yeah. So you can see uh, this goes on really well and it covers well, especially on the pre-primed surface. I'll show you what it looks yeah. like on the unprimed here too. Okay. Um, you can see it almost shows more of the wood through it on that initial once you kind of spread yes, it out. Yes, right, right. And that's the, other the advantage of having the primer on there. Yes, and the other thing is because the wood grains are open, it'll soak into the wood a little bit and it won't dry as evenly. It won't, I, the finish won't look as ideal. I, okay, all right. Um, and a single coat of that typically? You got a coat of primer or a single coat of that? I, I would do at least coats. two. Okay. That way you have something to work on as you go down the road. Yeah. And rather than just redoing the whole thing, you can do touch-ups as needed. All right, so you put the coat on. Then Do you sand that and then put the second coat on? If you really want to go the full distance, I would yeah. certainly recommend doing okay. so. Okay, all right, all right. I think that's a pretty good representation of easy epoxy in the application process. Yeah, beautiful. Yep, nice. Well, Tucker, I mean, it goes without saying, all boats have uh, cabin soles or walking surfaces in them, and, and they take a lot of abuse, if you will. It's not like a topside uh, hull or something like that. You got people stepping on them, scuffing them, wearing them down, and I guess there's some new products now that would help you address a problem like that. Right. Yes, yeah. We've certainly got a few non-skid coatings existing already. Mm -hmm. uh, Easy Dex is our tried and true one. Oh, okay. Very similar to our Easy Poxy we just talked about. Yep. This is a new, completely different offering than Easy Dex or anything else that you might have seen out there. Oh. Um, it's a water-based, rubberized, non-skid coating. Mm. Um, the aggregate is mixed into the product already. Okay. It's actually little EPDM, EPDM rubber particles, okay. so they're very soft. Um, as opposed to poly beads or sand. Yeah. So the more foot friendly, bathing suit friendly is what we call it. So right. if you fall on it, it's not gonna cut you up. Okay. And the coating itself in tough coat uh, mm -hmm. is much more forgiving. It builds about 30, 40 mils thick. So when you're walking on it, it's much nicer feeling. Oh, okay. Yes. So I've got, a, let's say I got a 
say a 20 foot Mako. I've had it for 15 years. The non skids worn down. Uh, I, I want to buy the system, right? Yes. To do this. Tell, tell us a little bit about the system and let's show people how you apply it and what happens. Certainly. So the, the Tough Coat system includes our primer, uh, a water based uh, one to one primer mix. Mm -hmm. There's two quarts in this kit here. Okay. Um, they're short filled quarts, so you just dump one A into one B. Oh, I see. Mix it up okay. and you're going to apply it over the existing surface. The only okay. prep for that surface required is to pressure wash it, degrease using like Purple Zap or Dawn or whatever degreaser you've got. Okay. Okay. Wash it off, let it dry. Mm -hmm. You're going to apply, we've already done it to this surface, you're okay. going to apply the primer with a 3 8 snap roller, okay. just a regular roller. Okay. It goes on milky white and it'll dry clear, it's kind of hard to see from here. Yes. But once you get that primer on, it'll look white and once it's clear and dry, you're ready to roll over your next coat. There's no super hard time constraints. Uh -huh. You want to wait at least probably four or six hours depending on your temperature range. Right, okay. And just like the other products, 50 degrees or above. Okay, yeah. Um, once that primer's dry, you're good to go over with your first coat of Tough Coat. Mm -hmm. The thing to note about Tough Coat is I've got my drill here. You yes. need to mix it up. Oh, okay. Um, even if you buy it off the shelf one day and they shake it up, you're going to probably want to stir it up the next day. Really? Okay. It's about it... filled up to here with particles. So yes. It doesn't yes. cover as far. It covers mm -hmm. about 60 mm -hmm. square feet, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it builds very thick. Yes. So okay. you're going to use our Tough Coat specific rollers. They come in either 9 inch or 4 inch rollers. They're very different, these rollers. Yes. So it's an open cell foam, and these are just used to, to pick up and disperse the rubber particles evenly. Okay. Um, you're going to have a, a slightly different application process. You pull right from the gallon as opposed to using a roller tray. Is that right? Don't waste any product or time. Okay. Um, slap it right on the surface and then you're going to evenly disperse and back roll a couple of times. We'll do it now. Yeah, um, let's, let's let me mix up like. the yeah. product real quick just okay. to confirm. Just use any drill mixer. Okay. You see you want it to kind of look like that consistency oh, when yeah. you come off. Almost like we're making a cake. Exactly. Yeah. Looks just like cake batter. Yeah. I wouldn't eat it though. No. All right, we'll set that down. So then, like just like I said, you use your roller, mm -hmm. dip it right into the bucket, get your roller filled there, dripping a little bit of excess off. And then what you're gonna do is just put it right on. Okay. And rather than spreading it like wall paint, yeah. what I like to do is just move it over the area I'm gonna apply it. Oh. Uh -huh. So try and get the roller filled. Yeah. And then you're just gonna back roll in quite a few different directions. Oh, I see, okay. So try to go one way. Mm-hmm and then go the other way. Okay. Wow. And you're just gonna kind of massage it. It's almost like one of those Zen gardens. Yes, very so, meditative. Yes. Yes. So rather, you see, I'm not trying to just cover the, the, the color mm -hmm. over the surface. Mm -hmm. I'm more focused on getting an even surface distribution okay. of the particles. Okay. So once you get it how you like, you wanna apply the first coat a little thin, and then you can do the second one a little bit thicker, but that's generally what you wanna do. Hmm. Um, you can see it doesn't go as far as you'd normally think a gallon of paint would. Right. But because it builds thicker, you're going to get about three to five years out of the coating itself. Oh, so okay. it lasts much longer. All right. Um, definitely a completely different product offering than something we've had before. Oh, it is, yeah. And if I, again, I'm, I'm visioning do this to my Mako and coating the floor, and uh, I've got to go around the console and different things. Is it relatively easy to clean up or something before it sets up? Yeah, because it's water-based, it'll clean up on soap and water, so it's oh, very okay. friendly. All right. You don't, I mean, always use gloves, yeah, <laughs> but it's right. not the end of the world if you get it on you or your clothes. Okay. Um, we've got a demo panel here, too, that I've already made mm -hmm. um, with the Whaler Blue. This color is Whaler Blue. <laughs> okay. All of the colors will match our existing Easy Poxy colors. Mm -hmm. um, this one it has had two coats put onto it mm -hmm. using just this exact same setup. It's actually from the same gallon. Yeah. Um, and you can see this is kind of what the final finish will look like. I know okay. it might be a little bit difficult to see on the camera. Yes, but it's a little rough. It's a non-skid finish. It's got some give to it. Right. Yeah. Exactly right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Beautiful. I think that's a good demo of Tough Coat. Absolutely. Well, you know, um, varnishing is almost a, a lost art now. When I was a young guy, uh, everything was varnished. Yeah. Now, not too much is varnished. You see the interiors of high-end boats, varnished surfaces, yes. mahogany, that sort of thing. And sometimes you see a sport fish. Yes. With, it's got a, it's a glass boat, but they put a, a wooden transom on it. Yes. So there's still some application for varnish. And I thought yeah. we'd just talk a little bit about that. This was a, uh, a raw piece of wood here that you, I guess you put sealant on it? Yeah, so this is just a piece of mahogany I grabbed from my local wood store. Um, just to give you a visual demonstration of the sealing process. Mm -hmm. This is the raw wood that how I grabbed it. Uh, mm -hmm. This side right here 
I've uh, sanded the surface with 120 just to rough it up and open those pores. Yeah. And we used our product Easy Wood Sealer. Mm -hmm. It's a the sealing is the defining process in the varnish application. Okay. You want to make sure you you get some type of product in there to close off those wood grains once you've sanded, oh. and create a good base layer to build up from. Okay. Um, our product Easy Wood Sealer is just our captain's varnish 1015 mm -hmm. thinned with mm -hmm. our 120 brushing thinner mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that way the solvents bite into the wood grain and really soak in and uh, prevent any uneven absorption of the varnish layers going forward. I see. So you do that and then you wait, I don't know, a few hours or maybe overnight or something like so that? So it's usually 12 to 18 hours 12 to 18 between hours. traditional okay. spar varnish coats. Okay. Um, overnight. You can certainly hot coat it and everybody has their personal preference with varnishing. Right. Like you said, it's a lost art, but the people who do it have their own ways of doing yes. so. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so you put the sealer on first. Yep. And then, then you... When you're working on a big panel like this, that's when you start applying 12, 18 hours, you start applying the varnish. Exactly, and you to apply, you just use uh, whatever your preferred method is, either a horsehair brush, chip brush, or a foam brush. Yeah. So, you know, traditional guys prefer the horsehair brushes. Oh, they do, okay. Brushes. Oh, okay. Um, right. The new guys like me, yeah. foam brush gets the it done. The foam brush is nice. Um, the, the nice thing about the Captain's 1015 varnish, it's very uh, amateur friendly. The coating is very forgiving. It doesn't build as high, so that way you can sand in in between layers and make sure you get a smooth final finish. Um, oh, okay. We've got All another right. product called Flagship Varnish yeah. 2015. Yeah. It's higher building, more for the professional applicator, so you can build to that final fill the thickest much quicker. Oh, is that right? Okay. All right. And uh, what? Probably two or three coats would be typical for most uh, <laughs> recreational boaters. I would recommend at least four to five. Oh, four uh, to five. Okay. Minimum. Some okay. some guys go very in depth and they do twelve to fifteen. Way over the top. Right? Um, but for uh, you know your regular, this is off of my boat. Yeah. I only did five or six coats on this personally. Yes. Uh, I'll just touch it up as needed. It looks good for my uses. Um, right. But certainly build it up at least four or five layers minimum. Four to five. So you've you've got a healthy coating to work from. I see. Okay. All right. Tucker, you know I'm a I'm a big fan of epoxies. <laughs> they're they're super strong. Yep. And durable. Uh, historically, it's been a little troublesome to apply them because you got to get the mixture just right. You know, you got to draw the bead and then put in the catalyst and all that nine yards. Yeah. But they've come a ways. Uh, can you just share a brief overview of? what's available in epoxies these days and how to apply them, how to make them work effectively? Certainly, yeah, we've got quite a few options uh, for every need on your boat. Mm -hmm. um, we've, starting with the smaller uh, aesthetic repairs, dings, nicks, cracks in the gel coat maybe. Yeah. Uh, it's called Easy, Easy Tex, uh, similar to Marine Tex, if you've yes. ever used that yes, before. Yes, yes. Um, we've kind of taken some of the hassle out of the application process, like you mentioned. Okay. Um, they come with a part A and a part B and a four and a half ounce kit over there. Mm -hmm. um, you mix them at a one-to-one -one ratio as opposed to like a golf ball to a dime or right, whatever right. That's you might the have done previously. Yes, yeah. And uh, what's cool about these both is they're different colors, so mm -hmm. you know which one is which. And yeah. you, you mix them up, one's gray, green and one's white. Okay. And you take equal amounts of each, um, stir them up, and once it turns gray, you're good to apply it on the surface. Oh, I see. We've got a couple options of Easy Tex available for use. This traditional one has about a 30 minute pot life. Mm -hmm. We've also got a faster curing version called Easy Tex Rapid Cure. It's a great option to bring out with you on the boat okay. because it cures in about five minutes is your pot life right. and it'll be good to go in a few hours. So if you're out there on the boat and you got a last minute repair at the dock, yeah. it's great to throw some of this in a hole, fix either a screw or a, a I mean, snap. A snap has come off, yep. Yep, mm -hmm. it's perfect for that. Okay. Do any, any last minute repairs to get you out on the water. All right. Can you show us a, a demo how you put those on and mix them up? Yeah, so we've got a we've got a hole here. We, I guess we'd mix it here and then we'd apply it over here. Yeah, ideally you'd want to mix on like a, a you know, plate or something yep. separate. Yep. But uh, yep. we'll, we'll certainly do that here. So yeah, we'll just take keep it all together. Yeah. One part here of the white. Yeah. That's the part A, mm -hmm. and then we get in here with the part B. Okay. Like I'd mentioned, they're two different colors, just that's so you green. know. That's green. That's the green one, yeah. Which is which. Yeah. You can see just equal parts. They are noticeably different. Mm -hmm. And then you're just going to mix it up. And sometimes we do races to see how quick you can mix them up. Okay. And you'll notice, if you've ever used these products before or some of the others, this is going to be a time saver just because it's a one-to-one -one mix. But oh, okay. it's really easy. It kind of is the consistency of peanut butter. That's the goal. Yeah. Gray, yeah. gray peanut butter would kind of be the best example. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Again, I wouldn't eat this one. No. But so once it's about to a good smooth consistency, yeah, um, you take some on your applicator, whether you're using a 
putty spatula or something like that just to smoother finishes better mm -hmm. put it in the hole mm -hmm. and then just slide it smooth oh i see and okay. then i made a little bit of a mess here but you can still yeah. see uh it holds the the whole the whole shape very well it won't sag droop yeah. or run right right and then once you get it on there you can just rough sand it and either apply a a top coat if you wanted to finish a, a crack or a void mm -hmm. or you'd at this point if you're doing a a snap or a screw you'd put that in and then yeah. let it cure as is okay so. all right so that's our easy text we've got one more option uh, if you want to flip that demo over paul yes um called flex epoxy it's mm -hmm. more of a structural repair epoxy compound mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it might be hard to see on the camera but we've created a divot here to replicate mm -hmm, right. a gash or a gouge in the bottom of a hull or yeah. a heel joint, something yeah. like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it's another epoxy, but it's it remains flexible. So if okay. you're using it on a, a big gash or on a keel joint, like I'd mentioned, it mm -hmm. will remain flexible and, and give with the boat, as opposed to cracking and creating further issues down the road. Okay, kind of a special application for that, huh? Yep, and yep. flex epoxy comes in cartridges, so you just put it in your caulking gun comes out at a fixed metered rate mm -hmm. and it also comes with a mixing nozzle so if you're trying to fill any holes or anything like that uh, you can get it right in the nooks and crannies ah nice nice great so the epoxy has some really good uses for those yes very versatile right well tucker you know marine sealants have changed over the years there's a certain you know uh, flag bearers in the industry that a lot of people are familiar with and yep. can use frequently and these are all sorts of applications, like putting, bedding down the chalks, the railing, or the running lights, or the spotlights, or just all over the place. You need sealant because my experience has been if people don't use a good sealant and don't bed down the, the, uh, the hardware, water gets behind it. Yes. And then most boats are cored. They're yeah. cored with a wood or they're cored with a, a cell of some type, and that gets soggy, and then bad things happen. <laughs> yeah. It's really big repairs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that makes using a good sealant and using it properly really important. Yes. What's 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 kind of state of the art in this area these days? Yeah, so we've come out with a new line of adhesive sealants, um, mm -hmm. specifically tailored towards uh, boaters' needs, because there are some tried and true standards out there. Yeah, um, we've worked with our sister company DAP to develop a few offerings to cover everywhere on a boat. Mm -hmm. um, really invest in making sure you've sealed all of your faces and crevices, so that way you don't have any large scale issues down the road. Right. Um, we've got. One offering you're holding is called our uh, advanced hybrid sealant. Mm -hmm. It's aimed at a silicone replacement. Silicone is either you know a right hand tool for most boat yards, yeah. or they won't even let it in the yard. Oh, okay. Um, it's hot or cold depending on which place <laughs> you go. Ours is a polyurethane blend, so it's not a silicone. Mm -hmm. It'll give you the same performance as far as sealing and waterproofing. Okay. Um, it's paintable, and you can use it down to 20 degrees Fahrenheit. We've got it in two different offerings, mm -hmm. which is white. Mm -hmm. And squeeze tubes yeah. right here. We got yeah. a four and a half ounce squeeze tube, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then we've also got a nice, cool offering of uh, crystal clear. Yeah. And it's called crystal clear because it's completely transparent, All so right. it doesn't get hazy or murky when you put it down. Mm. If you're doing a, an electronics install or yes. a Windows, right, right. The whole idea is you don't see it. Right. So right. that's the intent there. That makes um, sense. Yeah. This is one of our our great offerings amongst these three. Yeah. We've mm -hmm. also got an above the water line adhesive. Uh, more for removable uh, bedding like deck hardware, okay. stanchions, that yeah, type of thing. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It does give you the adhesive properties you're looking for, but you're not going to have to cut the boat apart trying to get it off. Okay, all um, right. All really right. good for any direct UV applications like stanchions. Yeah, or, yeah. Uh, Clinks, chocks. Exactly, sort of on top Spotlights. of the cabin, something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. So those are two of our great offerings above the waterline. Yeah, We've yeah, also yeah. got a third um, called Premium Fast Dry. Yeah hits the below the waterline application. So okay. if you're doing through hole fittings, oh, yeah. trim tabs, um, or your bedding like a deck, something like that. Oh yeah, yeah. It's a great um, great option for permanent adhesion. Okay. It's All a right. 24 hour fast cure. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's paintable as well. And the, I, for me personally, the biggest thing about this tube is, you know, you're always off put by a cartridge when you walk in the store because you never get to use it all. Right, use half of it and then you put it on the shelf. Exactly. So right. this, Inherently, because it's a moisture cure and it's a little more shelf stable, mm. it's going to last much longer. So okay. if you only use this much of the tube, just put it on the shelf. It'll last weeks, a couple months oh, before okay. you use it. It forms a little plug in the tip. You can yeah. put a screw in there or something, yeah. pull it out. Mm -hmm. um, you can get the little dap cap, something like that. Yeah, but it's yeah, much yeah. more shelf stable. Well, let's see how it goes on. You get a, We can demo it uh, just briefly here to people, right? Yep. So we'll show you. It's It's got a much more of a, a larger body compared to the other two here. Mm -hmm. So. It'll actually hold its shape when it comes out of the caulking gun here. Um, 
and that also aids to its shelf stability. Mm -hmm. uh, along with that, it also has a much better green strength. So if you've ever done one of these through hole fittings by yourself, yes. you almost need a second set of hands. So that yeah, way the, you do. Yes, yes, yes. the fitting it, yeah. doesn't come off there mm -hmm. um, when you're trying to put it on. Yep. So here we'll just show you the green string. So okay. stick it together. Mm -hmm. And you don't even have to press much, and then you know. Oh, okay, all right. It just holds itself. It's there. a lot of traction right so, there. Yeah. It's a really great product. This one is my favorite of the three, um, and it really offers you some some new opportunities you might not have had before. Yeah. So. Good point. Bottom paints are a critical part of performance for most boats, whether it's a power boat or a sailboat, and uh, they really evolved a lot over the years. I remember years ago, uh, hard surface as opposed to a blade of paints were were the key, mm -hmm. uh, and you put it on, you get a season out of it, then you'd move on to sanding and yeah, yeah. doing it again. Things have shifted in that area, right? Yeah, we've kind of shifted more towards the ablative uh, products to prevent sanding down, uh, prevent buildup. Inherently, it's like a bar of soap when you're using it, it'll slowly wear away, mm -hmm. try and save you some maintenance and headache down the road, mm -hmm. prevent buildup on the water line, uh, and prevent you from having to do any barrier blasting, soda blasting, removing the coating back down to bare fiberglass. Right, and this, they come in uh, on an industry-wide basis. They basically group into three different types of families, right? Yep, so you've Maybe got a... Overview there. Yeah, so you've got a mid-range option um, around the 40 to 30% copper range. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the, a good ba base minimum to start with. Yes, yes. Um, and then for for the options we've had here today, we've mm -hmm. got... Uh, Hydro coat, which is our water-based offering. Okay. Um, it's about 40% copper content. Yeah. It's a soft ablative, very friendly if you want to uh, paint it yourself inside. Mm -hmm. You're not going to smoke yourself out with the solvents. Yes. It can be pressure washed off seasonally. Okay. You've also got a solvent-based option called mm -hmm. Odyssey HD. Okay. Um, it's 45% copper, a little bit more, more. durable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. um, Better for those higher, faster speed boats like a Mako oh, 20 right, or something like right, that. Right. Or this guy right here would yeah. be a great option for that. Yeah. Um, we've also got another section that's copper free, mm -hmm. specifically uh, for aluminum boats, okay. out drives, yep. any underwater metals. Yeah. Um, Eco HRT is our entry level one, it's a mm -hmm. solvent based product. Mm -hmm. um, and there are some other options out there as well for uh, water based. The one that we have here today is Hydrocoat Eco. Yeah. Similar blender resins to the original Hydrocoat, just Copper free bioside. The the two biocides together are called Echinea, mm -hmm. and they work to prevent hard and soft growth. Okay. We've got some new offerings as well in the market. Mm -hmm. um, we've got a triple biocide now, okay. which has a different type of copper in there, mm -hmm. copper thiocyanate. Okay. It's more effective at lower loadings, okay. and we've taken those biocides from the copper free products and thrown them in here. I see. We found that those three work together amazing. Okay. Um, whether you use the boat or don't, you're not going to have any growth. Oh. And we've got an ablative offering. We just recently came out with a hard paint called Trinidad XSR. So okay. Odyssey Triton and Trinidad XSR are the triple biocides. All right, so I'll pick the right paint for your application. And then application's a big thing with these too, right? You've got these, you're using a much uh, uh, thinner, short, shorter nap than you would historically, right? Right, so uh, in the past, you'd use a, a 3 8 nap roller mm -hmm. and mop it on. Mm -hmm. The whole goal is to yeah. get as much yeah. on as you can because yes. it's all going to come off at some point. Right. <laughs> Um, now we use these awesome felt brushes. Mm -hmm. um, that one almost looks like velvet, it's so smooth. Yes. Uh, generally in the 3 16 snap is a minimum. Yes. yes. I personally like to recommend a quarter inch snap, that way if you're spreading anything, oh, okay. you get enough coverage on the boat. Yeah. Uh, but thinner is better, yeah, so thinner that way better. it wears off and you prevent less buildup going right, down the road. So that's the key, you just get, it, get the right paint and apply it correctly. Yes. Yeah. So Tucker, we've covered a lot of ground today on marine coatings, adhesives and sealants. So a lot of new products out there I think people will be pleased with that really help them in their boating experience. Is there anything you'd like to add before we wrap up the show today? Uh, you, first and foremost, I wanted to thank you for having me here. Mm -hmm. I appreciate the opportunity to just talk about some of the new innovations in the marine industry. Yeah. Uh, and I think I'd just say uh, to any boaters out there, the industry is always evolving, to keep an eye out for any new products you might see that might offer something you might not have known exists. Um, and if you've got any questions or you want to find some of these products online, you can go to our website at pettitpaint.com or reach out to our tech phone line and call one of us. We'd be happy to talk to you to answer any questions you might have. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. And thank you, Smart Boating viewers, for joining us. If you have any comments or questions, join us at the website, smartboatingus.com.